like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. I'm going to give you a rather ridiculous hypothetical. Imagine that the New York Yankees had a day on their calendar designated Aaron Judge Day. This was a day for the Yankees and the community to celebrate Aaron Judge and to honor his contributions. There would be a giant festival with musical performances and whatnot. Streets would be closed off, and then it would end with watching the Yankees play at Yankee Stadium. Except there's one small problem. When the Yankees announce the starting lineup for the game, Aaron Judge isn't in it. He's not playing the game. And it's not because he's injured or anything like that. It's not because of something out of the control of the organization. It's because they just forgot to put him in the starting lineup, thereby defeating the whole purpose of having Aaron Judge Day. How are you going to have a day honoring Aaron Judge and dedicated to him, and then not even play the man? Well, as ridiculous of an oversight as this might seem, in 1990, that's exactly what happened with this man right here. This is Kansas City Royals second baseman Frank White, and he is one of the greatest players in the history of the franchise. Heck, there's a reason why his number 20 jersey is retired by the organization. And as great of a player as he was, he was also a great humanitarian, helping out in his community whenever he had the chance. So in 1990, when it was Frank White Day, and was a celebration of White and the community, you would think that the Royals would, you know, actually play the man, seeing as people were coming to the game specifically to see Frank White. However, that's where you'd be wrong. Because somehow, on Frank White's own holiday, he didn't even play. Worst Frank White day ever. Because this is the story behind what might just be the worst promotional day in the history of the Kansas City Royals franchise. Before I talk about the promotion got horribly wrong, we need some context to understand not just how good of a player Frank White was, but what exactly Frank White Day entailed because it was a pretty big deal in the community. As mentioned before, Frank White is one of the greatest players in the history of the Royals franchise, playing all 18 years of his major league career with the team. There are only four people in the history of the Kansas City Royals to have their number retired. It is an extremely rare honor. One of them was Jackie Robinson, who never played for the Royals, but whose number is universally retired throughout baseball for breaking the color barrier. Another one is from a manager, meaning that there are just two players ever to play for the Royals to have their number retired. One of them is George Brett. The other, Frank White. He was a five-time All-Star for the Royals, had over 2,000 hits for the team, and was nothing short of incredible in the field, winning eight gold gloves, including six straight from 1977 to 82, as he led the AL in fielding percentage for his second baseman three times, and came in second another four times. He helped the Royals win their first World Series in franchise history in 1985 by driving in six runs, including three in their 6-1 win in Game 3, and one in their dominant 11-0 win in Game 7. Today, White is near the top of Royals history in just about every category. He's second in games played, playing 2,324 games, only behind George Brett. He's second in hits with 2,006, only behind George Brett. He's second in doubles with 449, only behind George Brett. And on top of that, he's third in total bases, fourth in walks, fourth in RBI, third in singles, third in extra base hits, and fourth in times on base. You get the idea. White was an incredible player, and that goes without said. But aside from just being a great player, White was a great person who helped out a ton in his community. And in 1982, the first annual Frank White Day was held to not just honor him, but to celebrate the community where White grew up in, and where his parents still live. Now, I've seen conflicting reports about whether this was the first Frank White Day, or whether there was one in 1981, so I should note that in advance. It started off as a way to promote a sense of community after St. Joseph's Hospital got torn down, and they were trying to boost the economy and get local businesses to move into the area. It was an entire day-long festival featuring a parade, a jazz quintet, and even an appearance and a speech by White. Following the festival, the community would head over to Royal Stadium, 
where White would be honored on the field in a pregame ceremony. And then, the Royals would take on the Minnesota Twins. As White said in the celebration, It's my particular day, but it's mine to honor some particular person who has contributed to the community in the past year. The more you grow and the more you develop from an economic standpoint, I think the more you will draw people back to the downtown area. The celebration itself was organized by the Key Coalition, and as the president, Ada Thomason, said on this, Frank White Day is to let the community know we're trying to upgrade the area to make it more livable and to bring back some of the former residents. And in this community, Frank White Day, usually held on a Saturday in September, was a pretty big deal, usually drawing somewhere around 2,000 to 2,500 people, which is impressive since the community is just eight streets long, from 27th Street to 35th Street. Just to give you an idea of what the celebration entailed, the 1982 edition featured more than 100 bands and groups signing up. The 1985 edition featured homemade arcade games and fire trucks. And the 1986 edition featured t-ball, three-on-three basketball, figure painting, a bike race, and free hamburgers giving out by McDonald's. And in 1987, when supermarket chain Aldi did not participate in the event, community members boycotted the store until they apologized. And no one had a bad thing to say about Frank White and why he was being honored. As Thomason said, he's a homegrown role model for our children. It's more or less just a chance to get the community together to have some fun. And it's a day to honor Frank and what he's done. You know, some people who become successful forget where they came from. Not Frank. He's not like that. He's a real gentleman, and he's a real inspiration to the kids. Harold Johnson, who became the president of the Key Coalition in 1986, said on White, Frank White is our Babe Ruth, our community's Jackie Robinson. He's our all-American boy, our ideal role model. Not every community is fortunate enough to have a Frank White, and when you do, you have no choice but to honor him. We have kids in very bad need of a model like Frank, he has never forgotten the neighborhood he came from. I don't think there is a mother or father here who would not like a son like Frank. Inez Kayser, the president of the coalition in 1989, said on White, he's a role model for all youth, and especially for black youth. And Jackson County legislator Carol Coe said on him, I'm just very proud of Frank. He's symbolic of what you can do with hard work and persistence. And as Frank White himself said on this day and the purpose behind it, it has always been my wish after the first Frank White day that I not be honored myself. There are so many more people reported in the city than sports figures. People that carry a bigger load and sometimes a more stressful load. Our goal was to get the kids involved and let them know who a lot of their black leaders are. In other words, Frank White day was about community outreach, about positivity, and about inspiring people. And considering that it had been going on for nearly a decade by this point, you would have to be living under a rock to not know about Frank White Day, especially since the Royals themselves gave away tickets for the day. Which takes us to Sunday, September 23rd, 1990, the ninth annual Frank White Day. On this day, the Royals were set to take on the California Angels although this game was absolutely meaningless in terms of the standings for Kansas City, seeing as they were 70-81 and 81 and were 27 games back of first place in the AL West at a time where only the division winner made the playoffs. In other words, while you obviously want to win the game and you're playing to win it, it's not as though this is an all-hands-on-deck situation where you play your best lineup no matter what as you try to make a late playoff push. You're mathematically eliminated. And sure, it had been a bit of a rough year thus far for the 39-year-old second baseman, who was easily having the worst year of his career, hitting a career-low 216 with just 52 hits, his lowest since 1975, two home runs, his lowest since 1974, and 21 RBI, his lowest since 1974, as well as an on-base percentage of 253, his lowest since 1974. However, despite his struggles, he was playing better as of late, as in his last five starts, he hit 313, didn't strike out once, and even got his 2000th career hit, crossing that milestone. So he absolutely could still play, even if it was nowhere near what he used to be able to do. 
Now, the good news for the Royals was that they won 4 0. But the bad news was that everyone left disappointed because there was something missing from the Royals lineup on Frank White Day. That's right, Frank White. Frank freaking White. Because somehow, despite this day being Frank White Day, despite the community knowing about it and having done the same exact thing for a decade, despite the day being well publicized, seeing as the Kansas City Council approved a $10,000 contract to help set up the festival, and despite the Royals giving away tickets to the community during the festival for Frank White Day, Frank White was not in the starting lineup. And people were absolutely livid about this, and understandably so, seeing as they can't exactly have a day to honor Frank White and not play Frank White. It got so ugly that the Royals had to issue a public apology, with the organization saying, the Royals are sorry if White, his family, and the Key Coalition were offended in any way. Which isn't really much of an apology, as it's more of, I'm sorry you got offended more than anything else. And manager John Wavin delivered, somehow, an even worse apology, saying, it was an oversight on our part. Had I known the festivities were scheduled, he definitely would have been in the starting lineup. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, what's so bad about that apology? Because if Lavin truly didn't know that this was Frank White Day, then he has to be the dumbest person in America. Number one, he had been managing the Royals since 1987. He had been around the block in Kansas City a few years for some Frank White Day celebrations. So it wasn't like this was his first year there, and he had no idea what was going on. But number two, Aside from the fact that there were numerous articles written in local newspapers leading up to the day of the game and the celebration, the Royals made it extremely obvious that this was Frank White Day. The only way they could have made it more obvious was if they renamed their team the Kansas City Frank Whites. Want to know the person who threw out the first pitch for the game? Frank White Sr., as in White's father. Want to know who sang the national anthem for the game? Faye White, as in White sister, how oblivious and dumb do you have to be to not know that this is Frank White Day when not only are you promoting it as such, but when White's family is in attendance and is playing a critical part in the festivities. It's like going to a birthday party and not realizing that it's a birthday party, even though there's a cake with numbers on it indicating that person's age and decorations galore that say happy birthday. By this point, the relationship between White and the Royals was highly strained, and this definitely played a part in it. So what's the main takeaway from this? If you're going to throw a promotional day celebration honoring a player, make sure that player actually plays. That's kind of important. It's not really much of a celebration and a commemoration of that player if he doesn't get to appear in the celebration. Because when it came to Frank White Day in 1990, the Royals did not have it. They did not have the white stuff. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.